Today we're going to be talking about the unit circle. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because it's a super important topic. If there were only one concept that I could pick that I wanted to remember from pre-calculus or trigonometry that I would need for calculus, it would be the unit circle because we use it so often. And the better you have the unit circle committed to memory, the easier calculus is going to be on you. And the reason is because we are looking at the angles on the unit circle all the time. So today we're going to talk about how to remember the unit circle and how we're going to use it in calculus. Now, when it comes to building the unit circle, we're interested in three things. First of all, we're interested in the coordinates. So I have an image here of the unit circle over on the right hand side. What we want to do is label the coordinates at each one of these places where we have a line intersecting the circle. And we'll talk about that more in a second. We're also interested in the angles of each of these lines. And we're interested in the angles in both radians and degrees. So we're going to say angles in radians, we want to label those. And then we also want to be able to label angles in degrees. So we have angles in degrees like this. And we're going to do these in different colors so we can keep track of them. And more or less, we're going to label this unit circle, build this unit circle in this order. We're going to look at coordinates first, then angles in radians, then angles in degrees. So when it comes to building the coordinates out along this unit circle, the first thing we want to remember about the unit circle is that it's called the unit circle for a reason. The reason is because the radius is equal to one unit. So when we're talking about this point here, the unit circle is centered at the origin. So this point here is the point zero zero. The unit circle is always centered at the origin. And the radius of this circle is one. So r equals one. And that's the distance between the origin here at zero, zero, and this point here. So this distance is r equals one. The radius is equal to one. And that's why it's called the unit circle, because it's one unit. So since we know that, since it's called the unit circle, we know that if we're going out a distance of one here along the x-axis, right, since this is centered at the origin, this is the x-axis here, which we'll write here, and this is the y-axis here. So if we're going out a distance of one along the x-axis in the positive direction of the x-axis, then this coordinate point right here is the point one, zero. We've gone out a distance of one along the x-axis, but we're still at zero in terms of the y value. So the coordinate point is one, zero. Now similarly over here, we could label this point negative one, zero, because the radius is the same on the left-hand side of our circle. Now if we want to label our coordinate points along the y-axis, we have the point here, zero, 1, our x value is 0, but our y coordinate is now 1, or this point here, 0, negative 1. And these are called our major axes, right, our x axis and our y axis. So we've labeled those coordinates. Now we can label the coordinates of these other points. Now these are a little bit more tricky, and you can actually derive them using the angles associated with each of these lines. But what we're going to do right now is just give you a way to remember them. And the way that you're going to remember them is you're going to label each of these with its coordinate point here. And we're going to draw big parentheses, and we're going to say, give us two fractions, both over two, where the denominators are both equal to two. Same thing here, over two and over two, and same thing here, over two and over two, like this. And this is a really common way that we remember the unit circle. And then what we're going to do once we have this is we're going to write one, two, three, down like this on the x-coordinates, and then one, two, three three going up here along the y coordinates. Now our last step is to take the square root of each of our numerators. So when we take the square root of one right here, the square root of one is still one, so we leave it. The square root of three, we can't simplify, so we have to write the square root of three. Can't simplify the square root of two, so we square root both of those. Square root of three and the square root of one is just one. And these are the coordinate points associated with each of these points right here. So we have one, two, and three points, and they're associated coordinate point values there. Once you have the coordinate points for the first quadrant, it's really easy to find the coordinate points for the other three quadrants because we just change the sign of the coordinate values. So for example, if we move over to this quadrant here, our x values are all going to be negative because we're in negative x territory here, but our y values are all going to be positive. So we can say here for this 
point here that the x coordinate is going to be a negative root 3 over 2. We're just borrowing from this point over here because we're moving directly across. So the x coordinate is now negative, but the y coordinate is positive. Here we're going to have a negative x coordinate, so negative root 2 over 2, positive root 2 over 2. And then here we're going to have a negative x value of negative 1 half and a positive y value of root 3 over 2, like that. If we move down here to this quadrant, we're going to have positive x values but negative y values. So if we label these here, we're borrowing directly from the first quadrant here. So a positive x value, root 3 over 2, and a negative y value. So this positive 1 half here becomes negative 1 half. And for this point, we have a positive root 2 over 2 x value and a negative root 2 over 2 y value. And for this point, we have a positive x equals 1 half and a negative root 3 over 2 for the y value. And then our last quadrant, again here, we're going to have both coordinate values be negative. So the x value will be negative and the y value will be negative. So we're going to get negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Here we're going to get negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. And here we're going to get negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. So those are going to be the coordinate points for our unit circle. Now we want to look at angles in radians. Well, again, in the same way that we started with the coordinate point 1, 0 out here along the x-axis in the positive direction, we're going to start with the same point for the angle in radians. So when we're talking about the angle in radians here, the angle is going to be 0. We always start with the angle 0 in the positive direction of the x-axis, and then we move counterclockwise around the circle like this. So positive radian angles are going to occur in the counterclockwise direction. So we're going to move this way, and what we're going to realize here is that if we go the full circle, we know that our angle is going to be 2 pi. So when we get all the way back to the beginning, the angle is 2 pi. So this is going to be 0 or 2 pi right here. And of course, if the entire circle is 2 pi, then just half of the circle right here is going to be pi. Now from here, we can say a quarter of the circle, we're just working backwards here, if half of the circle is pi, then a quarter of the circle is going to be half of pi, or in other words, pi over 2. If we want this angle here out along the negative direction of the y-axis, we know that we have pi plus another quarter of the circle. We know a quarter of the circle is pi over 2. So pi plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So this ends up being 3 pi over 2. And that makes sense because, again, if we start from 0 and we count out by half a pi each quarter of the circle, we get to 1 pi over 2 then 2 pi over 2, which simplifies to pi, then 3 pi over 2, then 4 pi over 2, which simplifies to 2 pi. So we just count by 1 half pi on each quarter of the circle. Now we can look at our pi over 4 terms. If we take half of pi over 2, if we split this quarter of a pi into an eighth, then we can get this half angle right here as pi over 4, because half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. And now we just count up again here. We start from 0, we have 0, we have 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which just simplifies to pi over 2, then we have 3 pi over 4 right here, 4 pi over 4, which just simplifies to pi, 5 pi over 4 here, 6 pi over 4, which simplifies to 3 pi over 2, and then 7 pi over 4, like this, getting finally here to 8 pi over 4, which simplifies to 2 pi. Now for the last part of this, we need to know that this angle here is not half of pi over 4. It's not pi over 8. This is actually 2 thirds of the angle pi over 4. Notice that this line here is closer to the angle pi over 4 than it is to the angle 0. And in fact, it's 2 thirds of the way toward pi over 4. So this area here is double this area right here. Now we can just remember that that's pi over 6, or of course we can take pi over 4 and multiply it by 2 thirds, and what we get is 2 pi over 12, which is equal to just pi over 6, and that's how we know that we have pi over 6 here. We can also find pi over 6 because we know that this angle is 1 third of the angle pi over 2, and here's what you can see. You can notice that this distance right here is 1, this distance here is 2, 
and this distance here is 3. Notice how they're all equal. These distances are all equal. That tells you that this pi over 6 angle is one third of this pi over 2. So we could always take here pi over 2, divide it by 3. That's of course equal to pi over 2 times one third, which is equal to pi over 6. So that's another way that we know that this is pi over 6. And now we can just count up. We have 0, then we have 1 pi over 6. This line here is going to be 2 pi over 6, or pi over 3 when we simplify it. 4 pi over 6, which of course just simplifies to pi over 2. 2 pi over 6, which of course just simplifies to 2 pi over 3. 5 pi over 6 here, which we can't simplify, all the way down to 6 pi over 6, or just pi. Now here we get 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, or 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6, or just 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6, or 5 pi over 3. And then 11 pi over 6 all the way up to 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6, and that simplifies, of course, to 2 pi. Now we've marked off our angles in radians. Let's go ahead and look at our angles in degrees. Again here, we said that this angle was 0 in radians. It's also going to be 0 here in degrees, or 360 when we go around the circle one full time. Remember that one full turn is 360 degrees, so 0 and then all the way to 360. And we're just going to attack this the same way that we went about angles in radians. We're just going to take half of 360 and say that the angle here is 180. We're going to take half of that and say that the angle here is 90. We're going to go halfway between 180 and 360, and we're going to get 270. And of course, this makes sense because when we start with 0 and we add 90 degrees at a time, we get 90, 180, 270, 360. Now we can cut each of those in half, and we can do the 45-degree angle. So half of 90 is 45. This angle right here is 45 degrees. If we start from 0 and count up by 45, we get 0 to 45 to 90 to 135 right here to 180 to 225 here to 270 to 315 at 7 pi over 4 and then back to 360, adding 45 to 315 gets us back to 360. Now again here, we know that this first angle is one third of this 90 degree angle, so 90 divided by 3 gives us 30. We know that that's 30. We can also say 2 thirds of 45, that also gives us 30. So we say 30 there, we start at 0 and we count up by 30. So 0 up to 30, then we have 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, add 30 get 270, add 30 get 300, add 30 get 330, add 30 we're back to 360. So those are our angles in degrees and that's how we build our unit circle from memory. Now, why is this so important in calculus? Well, we're going to use the unit circle for a million different things, but the most common way that we'll use the unit circle is we'll be presented with something like cosine of pi over 3 and asked to evaluate this. This will come up in a problem in calculus, and we'll need to figure out what the value is of cosine of pi over 3. Well, when we have the unit circle, each of our coordinate points here represents cosine and sine of each angle. So these coordinate points are not just xy coordinate points, they're actually cosine theta, sine theta coordinate points. And what we mean by that is that the x value represents cosine of the angle, and the y value represents sine of the angle. So if we look here at our first angle, pi over 6, if we have cosine of pi over 6, we can find pi over 6, and since it's cosine, take the x value of that coordinate point. So cosine of pi over 6 would be root 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 would tell us to find the pi over 6 angle and then take the y value of the coordinate point, so sine of pi over 6 would be 1 half. In the same way here, if we have cosine of pi over 3, we find the angle pi over 3, and then since it's cosine, we take the x value and that's 1 half. So this is equal to 1 half, and we can use the unit circle to simplify this. What about a different example? What about if we have sine of 3 pi over 4. Well, we find the angle 3 pi over 4. We start at 0 here, and we look for 3 pi over 4 
Here it is. We're looking for sine of that angle, so we take the y value, since we have sine, that's positive root 2 over 2, so that's equal to root 2 over 2. So we can simplify that way. Well, what if we have tangent of 3 pi over 4? Well, we need to express this trigonometric function in terms of sine and cosine. We know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine, so what we get here is sine of 3 pi over 4 divided by cosine of 3 pi over 4, and then we can grab these values from our unit circle. So sine of 3 pi over 4, we go here to the angle, take the y value since it's sine, and we get root 2 over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 4, we go to the same angle and take the x value since it's cosine, which is negative root 2 over 2. And we can see that these will cancel and we'll just be left with negative 1. So tangent of 3 pi over 4 simplifies to negative 1. A couple things to note about the unit circle, we can also use it to find angles that are greater than 2 pi. So even though these radian angles only go from 0 all the way around to 2 pi, if we're given, for example, cosine of 3 pi, we just count around, right? So cosine of 3 pi, we're going to get 1 pi, right? We find here 1 pi. So we go start at 0, go around to 1 pi, 2 pi back to 3 pi, and this is where we end up, back at this angle pi again. So ending up here, because we have cosine of 3 pi, we look at the x value, and the x value is negative 1. So this is equal to negative 1. You can also do it this way. If you have an angle that's greater than 2 pi, you can subtract 2 pi from the angle, and you'll always get the right answer. So 3 pi minus 2 pi is just pi, cosine of pi, and of course that's what we had before, we know that that equals negative 1. So you can either count around like this, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, or you can subtract 2 pi from the angle until you have an angle that's less than 2 pi. The last thing I want to mention is that we've talked here about positive angles. When we move in the counterclockwise direction, we have positive angles. So when we start here at 0 and we move counterclockwise, we get positive pi over 6, positive pi over 4, positive pi over 3, etc but we're actually going to encounter negative angles a lot as well, especially when we deal with parametric and polar curves in calculus. When we do, we're going to move in the opposite direction. So for example, if you're asked to find sine of negative pi over 4, like this, instead of moving in the positive direction to pi over 4, we're going to move in the negative direction by pi over 4 radians. So normally we would start at 0 here, and we would move counterclockwise in the positive direction of the angles to pi over 4, this point right here, until we get to pi over 4. Well, we're going to move in the negative direction the same distance. So we're going to come out here to this corresponding point, to negative pi over 4, and we can see that negative pi over 4 is equal to 7 pi over 4. So sine of negative pi over 4 is the same thing as sine of 7 pi over 4. And either way, because we're taking sine of the angle, we look at the y coordinate here, and we can see that both of these are equal to negative root 2 over 2, the y coordinate of this point. So if we have a negative angle, just start at 0 and instead move clockwise in the negative direction, the same distance you would have moved in the positive direction to find the positive version of that same angle.